Hello, you are listening to Dr. Shishma Singh today in Unit 9 Dependency Theory of Underdevelopment. We are going to talk on the topic expansion of dependency theory, Gunter Frank and Wallström. And in specifically, we will continue with the Emule Wallström. These divisions of core, semi-periphery and periphery are lasting divisions of world system. Unlike other theorists of modernization and capitalism, he does not look at these divisions as residues and irregularities that will go away. Watson looks at the world system in a historical perspective and traces it 16th century. Early capitalist accumulation and further expansion during colonialism and imperialism. The capitalist world system is far from the homogeneous according to him and there were vari variations in capitalist accumulation and political power depending on civilizational development of a region or a country. The capitalist world economy as envisioned by the Walston is a dynamic system which change, changes over time. However, certain basic features remain in place. The core countries, mainly Western European countries and other developed nations continue to benefit from the world capitalist order through high profits earned from exchange of manufactured goods for raw material from the periphery. Walston's analysis takes the internal dynamics and politics of power into account as well. In the periphery, landlords, of, for example, often gained greater wealth at the expense of their underpaid curse labor since landowners were able to expropriate most of the surplus of their workers for themselves. In turn, in the core regions, many of the rural inhabitants increasingly landless are forced to work as wage laborers who initially saw a relative decline in their standard of living and in the security of their income. Overall, certainly, Walston sees the development of the capitalist world economy as detrimental to the large proportion of the world's population. Many of the relative nature of power relationship between core and the periphery and the semi-periphery have been brought out to explain the rise of semi-peripheries such as China and Brazil by followers of the world system theory. Walston's criticism of capitalist world order has made him a favorite with many anti-globalization movements. His critics have, among other things, faulted him for his alleged ungrounded analysis of history and general sweeping tone of historical perspective that he adopts. We have so far tried to understand the three main strands within the dependency theory which as we mentioned earlier is not only critical of neoliberal theories of development but also looks at trade not in isolation but in a large context of world in a political economy system sense. In the following section, we will attempt to capture the main propositions of dependency theory, but before that, let us answer some questions. After reading the three strands of the arguments presented above, we must have realized that dependency theories are essentially pointed out to the fact that the world is interconnected in a way that development or underdevelopment can not be seen in isolation. But we say that the increase of multinational corporations and interconnected world of globalization 
more than ever the world is divided into core and periphery and do we consider india a peripheral nation or semi peripheral nation if we were to argue from the perspective of the world system theory now let us start the next topic the essential propositions of the dependency theory there are many points of disagreement among dependency theorists but they do share some common reference points sunkal definition in some sense of, is a summarization of the dependency theory he says dependency can be defined as the explanation of the economic development of a state in terms of the external influences political economic and cultural on national development policies theorists such as under gunter frank paul baren and herin kyo Cardoso agreed that the states of the developed world are increasingly interdependent on one another but thought that the relationship is different from the relationship between the developing and the developed nations a banker and a client are interdependent too in that the banker needs the income from loans to survive and the client needs the loan to build his home but the structure of the relationship is inherently unequal and this inequality colors all of the interaction between them tritonia doso santoso emphasizes the historical dimensions of the dependency relationship in his definition dependency is an historical condition which shapes a certain structure of the world economy such that it favors some countries to the detriment of others and limits the development possibilities of the subordinate economics a situation in which the economy of a certain group of countries is conditioned by the development and expansion of the other economy to which their own is subjected here we want to close this lecture thanks for listening